Hello everybody, Tortoise Investing coming at you today with three of the best dividend stocks to buy now. We are talking about some cash flow generating compounders. We're going to be taking a look at them through Qualtrum Insights at all their metrics. We're going to be taking a look at projected annual returns over the next five years. And all of that will be through Qualtrum. If you're new, if you love dividend investing, hit that subscribe button for me. Drop a like down below and comment letting me know do you own any of these that we are going to be talking about today. Now without further ado, the stonks. Today's stocks are going to be taking a look at our MasterCard, Visa, and Broadcom. Three pretty popular ones, I feel. And uh, they're all doing pretty well, honestly, over the last... A year or so. Now, none of this is financial advice. As always, do your own research before investing into anything. These are just three that I thought I'd put out there. You might do your own research and see if you like them or not. Now, MasterCard. Why do I like them so much? Well, MasterCard and Visa, they kind of fall in the same boat. You got plastic in your wallet. It's probably one of these. Or, yeah, probably got both, to be honest. <clears throat> got just a cash flow yield here, yield here of 2.53% and uh, a dividend yield of 0.56%, payout ratio just over 20%. Now the revenue, revenue has been growing at a rate of 11.64% over the last 10 years. That is beautiful, just up and to the right. Take a look here at the free cash flow. Very similar situation, 11.71%. And if we look at it here on a free cash flow per share basis, it's actually gonna be higher at 14.5% because they do those delicious share buybacks, which is what you want your companies doing so you get a bigger and bigger piece of the pie. Take a look at the EPS growth, 16.54% over the last 10 years. Again, just everything's falling in line. Debt, they have $13.7 in debt. Their cash on hand is over $9 billion. Not worried there whatsoever. Usually my rule of thumb is I don't like companies that have more than three times their EBITDA. In debt, their EBITDA as of last year was $15.35 billion. So his debt is nothing. They could pay this off very easily. Now the dividend is where they shine over the last 10 years, growing at a rate of 19.62%. That is amazing. That is compounding right there. And again, this share is outstanding, decreasing at a rate of 2.47% over the last 10 years. So they are doing share buybacks very consistently. And that is going to contribute to a growing return on capital employed. This thing in 2020, when the world shut down, was still above 37% ROCE. That is just amazing. And it's been above 50% in 2022 and 2023. So that is just silly. You could cut their ROC in half twice, and it's still beating most companies. Now, uh, I have a scenario that I had made for it. How I found the revenue is I just Googled MasterCard revenue forecast and you get 11.3%. So whenever I set up this scenario through Qualtrum, I did 10.3%. I cut a percent off just to be a little conservative. I did that with Visa and Broadcom as well. Uh, it is a highly predictable business. Cash flows and everything, as you've seen, everything was just up and to the right. And if you hit update and you scroll down here, uh, you are looking at the middle ground, uh, the middle area projected annual returns is at 20.27%. If I can get that free cash flow yield around 2%. Right now, I think they're at what, 2.5%? 2.63. So even then, around that area, uh, you're looking at about a 15% return annually, but they are, uh, they've got a moat and a half. Them and Visa both are just so strong. And even at these high valuations where it is right now and it's been running, uh, the annual return is still projected to be pretty high. Now, this is guaranteed. This is just a little model that is through Qualtrum Insight that I use. Uh, but yeah, MasterCard looking very promising over the long term. Now, next up, Visa again. Falls right in the same boat as uh, MasterCard. Probably got a Visa card in your wallet as well. Got okay, just free cash flow yield of 3.34%, so a little bit more on sale-ish. Uh, dividend yields 0.74% and the payout ratio is at 22%. Now, very similar situation. Free uh, <clears throat> Revenue's been growing at a rate of 10.74% over the last 10 years. The EPS has been growing at a rate of 15.86% over the last 10 years. Free cash flow, 22.68% over the last 10 years. And we take a look at the free cash flow per share basis, 25.47% because they do those share buybacks. Uh, now they got, they basically have as much cash on hand as they do debt. And even if that wasn't the case, their EBITDA last year was over $21 billion. 
Uh, the dividend has been growing at a rate of 17.92% over the last 10 years. So again, another beautiful compounder. And as I mentioned, shares outstanding, decreasing at a rate of 2.27% over the last 10 years. So this is another company that does a lot of share buybacks, which is beautiful. And that return on capital employed, above 30%, which is very, very nice. Again, you could cut this in half and it'd be beating out most companies still yet. And uh, I did the same thing with Visa, put in uh, revenue forecast. <clears throat> for uh, for them and came up with 9.5%. Uh, so when I made the model, I put in 8.5%. It's a highly predictable cash flow business. It's seen everything pretty much up and to the right. And that gives us a middle ground annual return <clears throat> of uh, anywhere between 11.92 and 7.92. I think they're going to be on the upper end of that. So I'm predicting, again, just I'm not a financial advisor, but I can see MasterCard and Visa both delivering double-digit returns over the long term. And uh, I'd continue being market beating over 5, 10, 20-year period. <clears throat> now, now, lastly, we've got AVGO Broadcom. They had a rough day on Friday. Um, they issued their guidance, and I guess it didn't look as good as people wanted it to. And there was a big pullback, which might be an opportunity. Now, free cash flow yield 3.01%, guide dividend yield 1.6%, payout ratio a little bit higher than the other ones at 59.7%, but still manageable. Take a look at the revenue. Revenue's been growing at a rate of 30.4% over the last 10 years. That's silly. Over the last five, 11.43%, uh, so a little bit more realistic because they did have these big bumps here once things started rolling. So we're going to go with the 11.43% uh, revenue growth. Uh, free cash flow has been growing at a rate of 16.42% over the last five years. That is amazing. Free cash flow per share basis. It looks like that is 16.64%, so that tells us that they are buying back shares as well, which is beautiful. EPS over the last 10 years growing at a rate of 31.15%, and over the last five years, 3.01%, so they had this 2018 spike here, and that's kind of throwing the metric off. But as you can see here from 2020, Things are just taking off up and to the right, and they have $37.57 billion in debt. They have $14 billion in cash on hand. Uh, their EBITDA was $20.8 billion. So again, rule of thumb, not more than three times their EBITDA in debt. This definitely is nowhere close to falling out, if that. Uh, now the dividend, dividend has been increased by a rate of 35.59% over the last 10 years, over the last five years over 14 percent so again another beautiful compounder we take a look at the shares outstanding uh slowly been nibbling at it uh it looks like it's kind of evened out over the last five years so still no issue there whatsoever because this company is just running and the return on capital employed in 2020, it was a 5.77, 2021, 12.29, 2022, 21.5, and 2023, 24.76. So another strong company, return on capital employee looks great. And again, Broadcom revenue forecast, <clears throat> you come up 14.3%. Uh, whenever I did the model, I put 13.3%. It's a highly predictable cash flow business. As you can see, everything's been up and to the right the last couple of years. And if you scroll down here, Pretty much predictable, uh, predicted annual uh, returns, double digits, uh, low ground, 14.68%, and it's just, it gets silly, up there in 24% plus uh, once you get the 2% free cash flow yield. But uh, yeah, three strong, I believe, moat companies that are going to be around for a long, long time. I personally own Visa and MasterCard in my own portfolio, and I intend to hold those forever and a day. And any pullback whatsoever is going to be a buying opportunity in my eyes. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more. And until next time, take care. See you.